was asked if you believe it to be true or not, there's a pretty sizable chunk of the fandom that believes that the Shikamaru and Tamari relationship is the most realistic relationship as well as the best developed relationship in the Naruto franchise. What started out as a match at the tuning exams somehow ended up being a spark that would go on to burn as an eternal flame for 19 years later with the 13-year-old Shikamaru facing the woman who would be his future wife who he would be married to have a teenage child with at the age of 32 years old where Shikamaru currently is. Shikamaru has had a life that many people consider to be in game. I mean, the guy basically married his high school sweetheart and the guy is living out his dream job as the Hokage advisor. You can't get any sweeter than that. However, keeping all of this in mind is the fact that Shikamaru and Tamari are written as such a realistic couple that we've been able to see the flowery side of their relationship that everyone enjoys over on Ninjagram, which is the Naruto World's version of Instagram. But we've also seen writers be given the opportunity to present the side of them that we wouldn't be able to see because it actually takes place behind closed doors. No relationship is in a honeymoon phase forever, and there are times where your lover is going to get on your every last nerve. Anybody who's been in a long-term relationship can tell you there are times where you look at the person and you say, well, you just shut the hell up. It happens from time to time. Don't matter how nice they are or whatever, every one of us has been there at some point. But it's when you go through all these storms that the true beauty of your relationship really becomes worthy of being put on a pedestal. For Shikamaru and Tamari, this is the case for them, and like a lot of married couples, the mistake of one spouse at times makes the other spouse question whether or not staying in the relationship is actually ever worth it. Now, in today's edition of Shikamaru Shinden, we're going to take a look at the moment when Tamari threatened Shikamaru with a divorce and met every single word of it. Now, for those of you guys who are new, Shikamaru Shinden Morning Clouds is a light novel set in the Boruto era over the long span of time in the aftermath of the Versus Momoshiki arc up to just before the events of the Owl arc of the Boruto manga. Now, so for those of you guys who want to read the novel and do some in a way to help support the channel, I'll leave links down in the description box for anyone who's interested in doing so. Now, in the scene I'm going to share with you guys, Shikamaru is fresh from one hell of a hangover. He's taking a bath to wash the thick smell of cigarette smoke and liquor and fried food off of his body, and his wife has been passive aggressive all morning long, sending messages to Shikamaru that she's pissed beyond any redemption at this point, and when she chops the food on the chopping board, it sounds to Shikamaru like she's cutting up a person and brutally murdering them. When he tries to apologize, she simply offers him a bowl of rice to eat and she refuses to speak to him. Which any man who's ever been hit with the I just fucked up combo, which we all know to be the silent treatment and then her being overly nice even though you just screwed up on a big level, you know that our boy Shikamaru's in a lot of hot water at this point. However, instead of coming right out and addressing the situation, Shikamaru tries to de-escalate the situation by giving compliments and after seeing that that actually wouldn't work, he tries to come clean, but Tamari at this point is pissed beyond measure and she takes things in her own hands and hits Shikamaru with the threat of a divorce. Now with the scene being set and the context being added, it's here I'm going to begin quoting. He set his chopsticks down and lowered his head so swiftly that he nearly slammed his head onto the table. I'm so sorry, Shikamaru said. You forgot, Tamari replied. I'm so, so, so sorry. Tamari's gaze was sharp, like the tip of an icicle. A cold sweat broke out on Shikamaru's face as he continued apologizing. I know you're busy as Naruto's advisor, so I won't say too much really, Tamari said. But yesterday, at the very least, I would have liked it if you would have came home for supper. I will definitely make this up to you, Shikamaru said. I'm gone forever if yesterday ever happens again. Tamari replied, I know, but it definitely won't ever happen again, Shikamaru said. You'll be late for work. You better get ready for the meeting with the five Kage. Tamari was right. He needed to be heading out pretty soon, so he quickly put the rest of his breakfast in his belly and stood up. Tamari started to clear away the dishes. I'm really, I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. You're going to be late, Tamari said. She turned her back on him in the kitchen. Well, I'll get going then. Shikamaru said. Outside he walked, shoulders slumped, along the road that led to the Hokage residence. He looked up at the sky and let out a sigh. 
Snowy white clouds drifted from west to east. Family. What a drag. End quote. Yeah, you know, you knew that what a drag was coming, man. It would not be a Shikamaru novel or scene if my dude did not sit there, take a smoke of the cigarette, puff that damn thing out, and say, what a drag. And after something like this, dog, I totally feel you. But... What I really like here is that Tamari is very much in character, especially when you know the extra stuff that is being implied here. So this requires you know a little bit more about the Naruto lore, but don't worry, Papa Kryptonian saying got you over here, okay? So essentially, Tamari isn't one to take any bullshit. Everybody knows that, and Tamari's not going to take it regardless of whoever you are. When Shikamaru takes too long to get to the point, Tamari bulldozes her way into the conversation, reminding Shikamaru that it's her anniversary, their anniversary. But before the excuses can roll in, she cuts it all off, stating that she knows that Shikamaru is busy, but if it ever happens again, Tamari is gone. That's the threat of divorce right there. Now, this, this last line is very huge, and I'm about to explain to you why. So this is that past bit of actual lore that you need to know for in order to fully understand the gravity of this scene. So the Shikamaru Shinden novel is very much a political novel that looks at the politics side of the Naruto world in the same way that the Gara Hedon novel that's set after the fourth great ninja war was cut from the same cloth and was a political novel as well. Basically, these novels are the Boruto and Naruto era's 13th chairman arc from Hunter Hunter. That's what the equivalent of these novels are. So if you'll recall in the Boruto anime during the episode where Shikadai is speaking with one of the elders from the Nara clan, the Nara elder has a warning for Shikamaru. He states that there are those in the Sand Village who feel as if Shikamaru stole the princess, of the Sand Village and were openly opposing to his marriage with Tamari, enough so that it actually puts Gara in a bit of a tough spot after he gives their blessing. That last part with Gara giving the blessing, that actually takes place in the light novel. Now the reason why this is so important to mention is very simple. So we're in a situation now where the events from the Gara Hedon novel are being referenced in a very subtle way. Tamari gave up a lot to come to Konoha to live as Shikamaru's wife. Quite a few people were very pissed off at her because their child would have a birth claim to the title of Kazekage if Gar or Konkuro don't have any children of their own. Now, for those of you guys who have not seen my Kazekage Clan Explain video, I'd recommend watching that video in order to fully understand, but just know that how the Sand Village picks its Kage and how the Hidden Leaf Village picks its Kage isn't the same. So Hokage is decided by the people, the feudal lord, the Jonin Council, and etc, etc. Kazekage is completely different. So with Kazekage, you can only be Kazekage if you come from Gar and Tamari's bloodline. No one else can be the Kazekage. So if a little kid has dreams of growing up to be Kazekage one day, his dream is going to get crushed as soon as he's old enough to comprehend how the Hidden Sand Village operates. Now, the council merely goes over their qualifications as a courtesy, but the Kazekage spot is already chosen. So when Tamari talked about being willing to leave, Part of that was a reminder to Shikamaru of just how much she'd given up in her home country and in her home village. That's not to say that she wouldn't ever return, but it's enough of a warning that Shikamaru knows that he screwed up. Another thing is the fact that Shikamaru tries to tell her that he'll make it up to her one day, and Tamari doesn't want to hear it, which is very much in character for her. Words mean very little to Tamari. Actions have always spoken the loudest to her, and she's made it clear. This was a line in the sand for her that Shikamaru's shadow better not even cross, which is why it's so hilarious when Shikamaru refers to family life as being a bit of a drag. The man is willing to face down the five Kage, but when it comes to facing down his wife, my man ain't got no time for that right there. However, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.